One of the things you can almost guarantee whilst you're out four-wheel driving is A, you're gonna get bogged, and B, you're probably gonna break something. Synthetic rope's been around a long time and it's become almost the first choice for so many adventurers to have as their, their rope of choice on their four-wheel drive winch. Now, these things can break because, you know, abrasion's gonna affect it. There's gonna be a number of different factors. Synthetic rope, if you're not cleaning it right, you're gonna get sand and grit all in through your braid here, which can actually cut the rope from inside out. If you're running over rocks, you can actually cut it. That's why they give you these abrasion sleeves, generally speaking, on a winch line. Um, under load, you, you know, they, they can break. You know, they are stronger than steel, but what, what one of the biggest, I guess, issues with synthetic rope and why it's breaking is if you're really loading up or side loading or down loading onto your fair lead, it generates a, a fair amount of heat and heat is the biggest killer for synthetic rope. Um, so there's all these little things that I guess make it a bit more challenging in some respects than, than wire cable. But for me, there's more benefits than there is negatives. And for those negatives, there's a solution. And that solution is knowing how to splice, knowing how to service your rope, knowing how to sort of look after it. And you're gonna get the most out of it and it's gonna last you a long time. Let's just imagine this rope is broken now. I've got a, a new rope with me. I'm gonna cut it and we're gonna talk you through how to splice and join if you've got a broken rope. After that, what I'll do is I'll show you how to create an eyelet as well because that's actually a really handy thing because from that, if you can create an eyelet on two ends of a four meter rope, you're gonna make yourself a nice little, probably by the time you've done your splicing, about a three meter bridle strap. So over the years, I've built this nice little toolkit that I take with me all the time. It doesn't take up a lot of room and it's something I've made. Now you can go out and buy these beautiful splicing needles that, you know, probably make it a bit easier, but you know, I like to make my own stuff. So for today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that one there. Um, and then you use electrical tape to clean it. You got a knife, you got scissors to clean it all up. Um, and I always carry just a small piece of timber with me because you can chop on that. But if you don't have timber in your kit, well, you're out in the bush, you're probably gonna find a piece of wood somewhere that you can use to cut on. I don't recommend doing this to a brand new synthetic rope but this one isn't broken and we kind of need to break it to show you how to fix it, right? So we're just on the side of the track and lo and behold, we've broken our synthetic rope. I can all but guarantee you it's never gonna be this clean. So what you're gonna have to do, you're gonna have this all broken and sprayed everywhere. So you're gonna have to go, you got your two end pieces, you're gonna have to find the nearest point of the cleanest rope. Once you've found that nearest point of the cleanest rope, that's where you gotta take out your tape. So what you need to do is then actually tape that little section off. So for the purpose of trying to demonstrate, let's just say it's down here. You just wanna put a couple of wraps of electrical tape on there. With that on there, that's now your new point of uh, where you're actually gonna to cut to clean out your rope. Now why you wanna put this tape on is because you want to be cutting with tape on, otherwise you're gonna end up with a, a pretty ordinary cut, kind of like how that finished up. So the tape actually helps you create a cleaner cut. And that is where you need your block and your knife. So a lot cleaner a cut than what you saw, just rip it into it with a pair of uh, good quality scissors. So you wanna do that on both sides. All right, now the next, the next stage of this is you actually want to taper this synthetic rope because what, what you don't want is you don't want a, a hard edge once you sort of go down the center of your, uh, of your rope. You wanna have it nicely tapered. Now, most winch lines are gonna be a 12 strand or 12, uh, 12 braid strand. Um, so what I like to do is I actually go down about 12 centimeters, so one centimeter every taper for every strand is kind of the, the rough guide. That's where I love these scissors. I've actually got a little measuring tape on there. You know, not that I'm saying everything is always about precision rocket science here, but it gives you a good guide of where you want to be. So I mark that, that's my taper point. That's where I'm going back down to. So do that on both ends. Now to taper this, what you're going to do is you're actually going to just remove the tape off the end here and you're just going to unbraid it and then just trim it back. I guess this shows why, you know, having this nice little flat piece of timber just makes that a little bit easier when it comes time to doing this tapering. You start to see, we're starting to get a nice little taper in here. And again, if you're in a rush, I mean, you could get away with not tapering, but I think it's just a good, 
good thing to do. It's a pretty good little taper there. Might just trim this guy back. So with all of our strands nicely tapered, that's where you need to get your splicing needle. And you want to put that down the center. Grab your electrical tape and you want to tape that to it. Try and keep it pretty tight. You'll, uh, you'll be grateful that you spent that little bit of time getting it nice when it comes time to actually finish the splice. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab your other end that you're splicing to. So with your splice, what you, the way it works is you're going to have, this is going to be your tapered section. I always like to have about 30 centimetres of, of good synthetic rope down the core. So you're going to have your tapered section at about 30 centimetres and that is the point that's going down this centre. So this one is actually going to go down the centre from here. So what we're doing, that's about 30 centimetres, that's where you grab your pen and you just mark. That's going to be our point where this needle is actually going to start to splice in. Do the same on this side, you've got your taper to here at about 30 centimetres and that's going to be it there. It's just good to do on both sides at this point in time. Alright, now onto the splicing. Now that's where this mark comes in because what you're going to do is you're actually going to run this guy 30 centimetres down the core and what you've got to work out is at what point this needle needs to exit from inside. So it's about here. Just a mark for a ref simple reference point. Right, now it's time to splice. This is the, can be the hard part but also can be the fun part. What you need to do is you actually need to open up this braid. It's quite tight, um, so what you've got to do is un untension it by just basically pushing it back on itself and you'll see you're creating yourself a nice little tunnel down the core there as you're doing this. So spend a bit more time getting this, this right now. You'll be, you'll be again thankful when it comes time to actually do the splice. So just open this up and there we are. We're back to our line here. So just make sure it's nice and nice and loose. So what you want to do, you want to actually then pick between your braids here, just after your line. Enter, you want to go in through one side, out the other. This is how you're starting your splice. Pull it through. So you want to pull it through basically to this mark here, because this is your, what you call your intersection mark. So line them up. That's as far as you really want to go. Come back on the back side. On the back side here, just allow for two, two of those braids. Grab it, go through, and come out the other side. Two braids is about a centimetre. You're probably going to be allowing about a centimetre. So you got that through. Then, again, two more. And at this time, this is when we're going to actually then now start to tunnel down the middle. So you want to get your needle tunneling down the middle, making sure you're not capturing any of those or your, your needle's not coming out. So you want to go down the centre. So we're getting pretty close. You can sort of see how much I've bound that up. We're getting pretty close to the actual mark now and I've only gone in that far. And you can see I haven't even got all that needle in there yet. Just keep, make sure you keep an eye on that you are going down the centre, you aren't crossing out any of that. There we go, I'm out the back, needles there. Gently pull it through. There we go, that's a start of it. That's definitely not your splice. Now it's time to take the rope off, uh, the, the tape off. There we go, needles out, tapes off. Remove this last little bit here, which was our marker at the beginning. Done. Tape is there, just make sure it's nice and clean. And then all you've got to do is bring that down. Make sure it's nice and neat. And watch that little guy just hide away inside there. Spend some time just making sure it's all nice and clean and that rope's in there fine. Give it a good jiggle. Maybe, you know, if you want to put gloves on if you're worried about your hands here. And that is one end spliced. Now you just got to do the other end. And then you are uh, back to finishing your winch and you're on the trails. Well that is uh, trackside, roadside, creekside, um, how to splice a rope. Now that's joining to, that's just made, if you've uh, broken a rope, that's how you join it. As you can see, that taper has just made that clean, sort of progressive finish. It's definitely worth doing it. You know, so many ropes I see, and, you know, I look at the winch line here off of the vehicle there, you know, it's quite a hard taper. That, ta that soft taper makes a massive difference. Now, now that we know how to splice two, two ropes together or a broken rope, now it's time 
I'll just show you how to do an eyelet. Exactly the same principle, except we're just gonna make an eyelet, so it's just back on itself. Now, the reason you'd want an eyelet is a few different things. One, you might actually be splicing it around a clevis hook. Say your clevis hook is broken, you have gotta put a new iron on. Uh, you might wanna actually create your own bridle strap. So you might be able to get five meters of synthetic rope, put eyelets on either end, you've got yourself a nice little bridle strap. You might wanna make a rope extension strap, you might have a specific length. So creating an eyelet, that's gonna give you your attachment point at either end of a rope. Um, same principle as a splice, except you're basically just like feeding back down onto itself. So at the end of your, uh, your rope, nicely clean cut. What you wanna do, again, mark your 12 centimeters for taper. And I can't stress enough how just tapering the rope, just spending that extra five to 10 minutes just changes, for me, the overall performance of the rope and also just the way it finishes. So you've got your 12 centimeters, you then need to add your 30 centimeters. So that's effectively what's gonna be down inside your, uh, your eyelet. So your eyelet needs to form there after that and that'll start working out where you're gonna actually go down in. So working out what your size of your eyelet is, so that's, that's probably about a standard size eyelet. I mean, you can go smaller if you wanted to, you can go bigger, but you just gotta work out what size your eyelet you want. Mark the rope on the other side and that's our point of entry. Just open that up a little bit just so you can get that in. Let's start tapering this end, get the needle on there. Now, as you'll see, we are making a bit of a mess with little bits of rope, bits of tape. Please, 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 please. Grab all your stuff, chuck it in your bag, take it away with you. Don't leave it sitting on the side of a track or trail. Bin it, take it with you. If it comes in, it goes out, plain and simple. So we've got our two marks, we've lined them up. There's our perfect little eyelet. Using crush tubes as an eyelet is a really good idea. So there's some really nice thimbles out there and a lot of ropes come standard with it. This is an example of a, of a crush tube eyelet. Um, what you would do is you just feed it through that before you run your eyelet. Um, I highly recommend using that style of an eyelet at the end of a, of a winch line. What we've got to do first, of course, is mark out where this rope tape is gonna come out about here, so that's where it's gonna come out. Open it up. Same principle again, that's where you want it. Two braids back, about a centimeter. Go in again, in and through. It's a nice little clean sort of entry and exit there. In we go. Make sure you get the center. You don't grab any of those outside braids. Pull back, Our eyelet's out, remove your tape. Once you do this a few times, I'll tell you what, it starts to get faster and faster and easier and easier. It becomes a bit of second nature. Just make sure that's nice and clean and then make sure that we've got that little bit of pull there just so it cleans that little thread up so just all I did was give that a bit of a pull just to make sure that weaving sections pulled down nice and tight and now it's time to just tension it down and there we have the good taper finish Simple, easy, you can go clever hook on the end of that, bow shackle, use it as a bridle, nice and easy. Well there you go, that is how to splice a broken rope together, put an eyelet in it. I hope you never ever have to repair a broken winch line whilst you're out on the trails trying to get to camp doing that recovery as the sun's going down, but if you ever do, that's how you do it. Um, I, I highly recommend just buying a couple of meters of synthetic rope. It, it's, it's good money well spent, getting yourself a couple of bits and pieces, learn how to splice because it's something that, you know, it's probably going to happen to you at some point in time. If you're out there, you're winching, you know, 
these are the sorts of things you, I guess you should learn. Um, Cause when you're out in the bush and you're using a winch, most cases it's a solo recovery device. So you should know how to, to repair, use it, service it, all that sort of stuff. So that's just two simple splices. If you disagree with how I splice, that's perfectly fine. This is how I've done it for, for several years. I'm sure there's splicing experts out there and hey, I'm no expert, but this has always served me right while I'm out in the tracks. And I tell you what, I love doing this sort of stuff. So if you've got any tech tips or advice or videos you wanna see us do, let us know. Drop us a comment below or just hit us up on socials.